Great friend, Timberlake here. Fun puzzle for you today. Glum Hippo uh, is being featured. This puzzle in the Latin is called Quad Lichet Jovi Non Lichet Bovi. I am sorry if I butchered that. The last time I took Latin, it wasn't even a dead language. It was like on life support. Oof, that's probably the only joke you'll ever hear from me. Anyway, what it means is what is permissible for Jupiter may not be permissible for a bull or... The idea is gods may do what cattle may not. It has the idea of a, it talks about a double standard, you know, uh, something that's permissible to one people, not permissible to everyone. What does that mean with this puzzle? Who knows? But I'm curious to find out. Thank you, Glum Hippo, for letting me feature these puzzles, these great puzzles of yours on my channel. With that, it's solving time. Okay, it is supposed to be a difficult puzzle. I will show all the candidates. And to kind of explain my rationale here, you know, Solving with the candidate showing is just one of three ways of solving the puzzle. Uh, the reason I'll do this is if I want to go to the most advanced type strategies for solving, you kind of need to have all the candidates showing. And I expect this to be that way based on the feedback I got from Glum Hippo and CTC Discord server. And so the goal is to eliminate candidates so there's only one possibility remaining. So we're going to be eliminating, eliminating candidates, which is different than when you're adding the marks yourself uh, where you're trying to just add information until you can solve a cell. So what do I see here? I'm going to kind of scan across, and I don't, uh, I'm looking across the rows here. Uh, I'm now in rows two, going to rows three. Scan across, don't see anything jumping out at me, naked, hidden, single, wise. Uh, now I'm in rows four, rows five. Oh, I do see a hidden, single, nine right there. Two nines down here in block uh, seven. I can't solve that any further. What else we have? Looking, and now row six. And now I'm in row seven, and I'm going to row eight. I see one six, so that's a hidden single six. Six six three six is there. Six six. Or I got a six right here. Not a problem. Uh, still two nines, multiple fours, ones. Can't solve that any further. Let's move on to row nine, and I see only one seven, so we'll solve that for a seven hidden single there. Seven seven two sevens right there. Can't solve any further. Okay, uh, let's move up, see if there's anything else I can solve, anything that jumps out at me. Now I'm kind of looking for like pairs and triples, and if I don't see that, I don't see other restrictions, I'll just go right to the candidates. All right, I mean, what's interesting here is this 2, 5, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1, 4, 5. Um, so the ones here are pointing pairs, so I can actually get rid of these ones right here and get rid of those ones right there because the ones are restricted in row 6 to block 5. All right, uh, let's move on. Again, the idea being, let's create restrictions, let's remove candidates as much as we can. What I'd always like to see in here is this is a strong you know, link, it's a conjugate pair of ones, might come in handy later, but right now I don't see that helping us with the puzzle. Uh, nope, I do not. So we'll move on to the twos. And don't see anything with the twos. Oh, except for a pointing pair. So these twos are limited here. Block eight, so we can get rid of those. And, or you can have this as a claiming pair of twos. And this creates a BVC. I care about bi-value cells because those will lead to, you know, and usually will help us figure out the more advanced strategies. Nothing there with the twos. Go to the threes. Uh, got another... You know, conjugate pair right there. That's kind of of interest to me, but not able to take advantage of that. All right, let's move on to the fours. Another little conjugate pair going on. So I think we have a lot of strong links. So if we end up having to do alternate inference chains, I think we'll get some value out of that. Uh, something else. I'm looking at you know just like this nice little T-shaped pattern in block eight. That's interesting, but I don't. See anything I can do with the fours and with fives. Okay, the fives are in an interesting shape, and I think I should be able to solve. I feel like I can be able to remove that five, but how can I do it? Is it a swordfish? Maybe? Yeah. So I'll show you the swordfish. Uh, there might be other strategies that can help solve this. But you can see there, so in these, you know, rows three, six, and nine, the fives had to be in one of these pinks, right? Because they're limited to, you know, the same three columns. 
And so that way we can get rid of the five right there, right? Because if you put a five right there, you're in these two spots. So then you could put a five there and then a five there, but then where would a five be along row eight or column eight? Nowhere. And then we'd break the puzzle. So that's your swordfish. Nice. And creates another BVC, which is what I like to see. Uh, okay, that one's sixes, sevens. Huh. Again, I'm seeing some more of these strong links, conjugate pair action. This is good stuff. Uh, which makes me want to, okay, pointing pair of eights, so we can get rid of these eights right there. We want to nines. Hmm. You know, another uh, strong link, nines right there. Okay. We have. No, nope, can't make anything out of that. All right, and we'll move on to the. Excuse me. So I'm interested, you know, you see this one nine and one nine. And so I look here to see if there's some kind of W wing, and I don't see it. If the nine was missing, we'd be able to work a W, you know, a D variant W wing action. Other things, you know, ones, twos, fours, fives, eights, four, six, it doesn't, there's not enough here to, to create uh, what would be some valuable illuminations here. And so I'll look really quick and see if there's a strong link that connects these nines. And then I'll look at the ones. Is there a strong link that connects here? And the answer is no. So I don't see any fruit of really going through these to uh, try to figure out X, Y wings because I don't see them connecting to anything that will be of value to me or an X, Y, Z wing. And there's nothing, not enough for an X, Y chain at this time. So I am going to go and do my alternate inference chain. So all this. And I just released a tutorial on that. I'm going to put a, a link to it right now. Hope you check it out about how to do these. And when I'm talking about alternate inference chain, it's more than just the one or two candidate variety. You know, these are going to be cells that have two or more candidates in them. And I have my own, I wouldn't say pat patented way of doing these, but uh, I'm the only person I know that does it. And I'm still waiting for someone to come up with a better way to solve these. So what I do is I'm looking for all these conjugate pairs for a house, right? A house could be, you know, this row or this block or a column. Uh, there's not a column conjugate pair that I can use for the threes. And then I'll color them because those are going to be valuable for me to help make my alternate inference chains because I'm using a value of, you know, strong weight links. Okay, the fives are nice because these are pretty much all conjugate pairs. So I'm going to do every five. Because you can see across the row, there's only two. In the house, there's only two. In the column, there's only two. So they all get greened up. And in the six, uh, it's possible there's just two sixes. No. All right, let's go to the sevens. Right here. And right here. These two, these two, and these two cut across. So again, keep in mind, these two are not a strong link with each other uh, because there's extra third seven, but that's a strong link with this seven. That's a strong link with that seven. We got to keep that in mind and don't fall for the trap. Those are where the strong links are. Eights, two eights, two eights. This is interesting because you have three colored cells right there. Any other eights? No, we go to the nines. And the nines. And then I work the different colors to help me see these. Again, two nines there, two nines there, two nines here. This is of interest to me. Like these, this 389 action going on here. Huh, I bet there's something there. And I'll try to figure it out. And then I'll settle on being on the bye bye cells. And I've explained this before. These are strongly linked to each other. So you can start or end within a bi-value cell along with all the colors that I call the uh, Christmas lights. So I'm going to focus down here. Any cell that you see more than one color, you should start focusing on those. And then any cell, a bi-value cell that links or that has a color in it, those are the other places I kind of focus on. 
there's a cell here with no colors in it, you're not going to be able to go in and out of that cell unless it's by value. So you can kind of ignore it. The only thing it will do for you is help. You'll be able to hopefully eliminate some from that. And then another thing to keep in mind is if I see something uh, where there's two colors of the same uh, along a house, uh, so, so let's say like the five and the eight were both colored here, then that's probably a hidden pair, and I can, you know, uncover a hidden pair and, and remove all the other candidates from it. But I don't see any hidden pairs right now. So what does this mean here? We've got strong like this eight or nine. Strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. And that's not a strong link because of this nine right there. But I just saw all those. I thought maybe we'd be able to eliminate something. Huh. Okay, let's look here. Strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. Okay, uh, strong. Okay, so if I start there and end there, I see type one, then we can eliminate the nines here. Oh, okay. And the other thing I see here is you have a weak, weak link back to this nine. Strong, weak, strong. So it's actually a discontinuous loop. So AIC type one, but it's a discontinuous loop. That's kind of cool. And so I'll explain a little bit more here. A strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak link here, right? Because there's our circuit weak link, weak, weak, and then back to strong. So if you have two weak links in a row, that's a discontinuous loop. Or if you had two strong links in a row. And what it means is you can basically eliminate whatever cell or whatever candidates in between those two weak links. So we know we can eliminate that. That's not a nine. And since it was colored, that means that whatever the other part of that conjugate pair was, we can solve for a nine. So there's two of those. Uh, and I, I'll just do it right here. This is a nine. I can solve that for a five. Awesome. And then what does that do for us? Uh, now these two nines are strongly linked, so I can mark that. And also I can update, you know, the nine, nine. Now you see there's only one nine left up here, so this has to be a nine. One, two, eight, one, two, eight, one, two, seven, eight. Can't do anything with that. Uh, one, three, four, one, four, three, four. Now these ones are strongly linked, and so I can do this, and I can get rid of that. So guess what? That's a three. Get rid of that, get rid of that. I think we uncovered a nice cell. And since this is now a 1-4, yeah, that's 3. Nice. And then we have a 4-8-9 coming here. So now these 4s are starting. I'm not giving up on the uh, coloring just yet. Because I, I know this is a difficult puzzle. There might be more to cover. But now I can see what right here. I'll show you. Oh, whoops. Um, that's a uh, one, two, six. That's a make a triple. So you can get rid of the ones and the twos and the sixes. And now you got a five, seven, eight action going on. So I'm going to be real careful and not eliminate all the other colors yet. But that has to be a seven. That has to be an eight. And that has to be a five. And this is a two. Okay, I will now eliminate all the colors. Because I think we don't need to do the alternate inference chains anymore. But I found a nice, cool, discontinuous loop. I do plan to do a tutorial on those uh, later on down the road, but I have done it in a previous uh, video, and I'll mark it here, which the puzzle was. I'm um, not sure which one it was, but you'll see the link go in there if you want to see me solving a puzzle that includes discontinuous loops. I've done a couple that way. Uh, let's see here. Let's get rid of that. One, two, one, two is a naked pair. So it can't be a one, two there. Now you have a four, six, eight, naked triple that way. One, two, six here. So you can actually get rid of that six as well. It means this has to be a four, six, eight, naked pair. Uh, one, one, two, three, six. There's only one, five left along row three. All right. Um, there's only one, one left right there. So which means that's a four, that's a one. This is a three, this is a two. This is a four. Uh, one and a nine, two and a one. 
Three six three six means that has to be a four. Uh, six. Yeah. I believe we have cracked this puzzle. Okay. Um, discontinuous loops are pretty hard to find. What, what cued me in was all the you know again the multiple colored candidates with the strong links moving in and out down here in uh, blocks eight and nine. And then I was able to kind of work through that to give me the discontinuous loop and solve the rest of the puzzle. Well, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Glum Hippo, this is a good one. I enjoyed it. Uh, double standard, huh? I think uh, maybe that had something to do with, with the discontinuous loop. Who knows? In the meanwhile, check out these other videos from my channel. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Smart Hobbies, thank you all so much for watching.